<laughs> you got it. <laughs> we were doing a thumbnail and he stuck his tongue out and his tongue is green. And he said, you have to stop the Grinch from stealing Christmas somehow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to I'm Corbin. I'm just And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, from our stupid content. Thank you for stopping your phone. Turn your camera on the bell for engaged squad. Bang! Also on our personal YouTube channels. Links in the description up below. Today, Rick, what are we doing? Uh, we're going to react to a song. No. A uh, stand-up comedian. No. A trailer. Informa informative video. Informative video. <laughs> how to put on your underwear without getting a rash. This is called, this is by Vice, and it's how Britain stole 45 trillion from India with trains. It's quite a title, isn't it? Yeah. I'm assuming it has to do with something, colonization, they stole a bunch of stuff. Did India, did Britain, does India have a bunch of trains because of Britain? Do they have their own trade system because they had to steal the resources somehow and the trains were the fastest way? That's a good question. I don't know. Like, I know how trains were developed and the railway system was developed in America. Mm. No idea how, why, where, when in India. Mm. Maybe this will help us understand that. Maybe. Uh, here we go. There is a kind of half-assed liberal idea that while colonialism wasn't great, at least Britain gave India the trains. And maybe that's something they should be thankful for. After all, trains are pretty useful, especially in the seventh largest country on Earth. So, colonialism, maybe not all that bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, Britain also stole $45 trillion from India, all the while exploiting religious divisions between the Hindu and Muslim communities yep. and further turning them against each other. Yep. And those beloved railways, they became the sites of mass slaughter while Britain sat back and watched. And how about man-made salmon? of Dirt, a show about Europeans getting rich at the expense of everyone else. That's the whole purpose of the show. Wow. Wow. But they don't teach Britain it in first got Britain, involved in India through the East India Company, which had its headquarters right here on Leadenhall Street. A private company owned by London stockholders, the East India Company grew over the next 300 years to become a quasi-governmental body with its own army and laws responsible for trading spices, cotton, silk and tea all over the world. By 1858, ownership of the East India Company had been transferred to Queen Victoria after the failed Indian Rebellion. Trains were the brainchild of British engineers. The East India Company would use railways to transport exploited resources like cotton and coal more efficiently around India. And it worked. Between 1853 and 1924, a railway network was created to help Britain extract from India relentlessly. And it's not like we gave India the railways either, by the way. We made India pay for them and we ripped them off in the process. Despite Indian mechanics having their own efficient wow. cheap designs, Britain made India buy trains from them. Between 1854 and 1947, over 14,000 locomotives were imported from the UK to India. Initially, Indians weren't even allowed to work on the trains. They were staffed entirely by white people, from the board directors to the ticket collectors. The Yikes. railways made little profit, but British shareholders who invested in its construction made vast returns, guaranteed at the expense of Indian taxpayers who had to pay for it. India's railways were basically like someone burgling your house, building a ramp to wheel all your stuff out, sending you a bill for that ramp, and expecting a round of applause. <laughs> Now that the railways like were built, this. Britain could get down to the task at hand. Oh, no punches. Squeezing like India for it. every last ounce of profit. They were really good at it. In the 1600s, when the East India Company was established, Britain accounted for less than 2% of the world's GDP, while India accounted for almost a quarter of it. Yep. By the 18th century, Britain had become one of the most powerful empires in the world. I wonder how. I wonder how that happened. the of the Mughal Empire was fading fast. Britain relentlessly squeezed India for every last bit of resource for its own uses. In 1943, up to 4 million Bengalis starved to death There's partly famine. because their food was diverted towards British soldiers yep. during World War II. Winston Churchill said the famine was their own fault. 
for breeding like rabbits. That's after quote. it was no longer profitable to remain in India, and after receiving huge pressure from the Indian independence movement, the British finally left in 1947. Before they went, they split the country into two. Hindu majority India and Muslim majority Pakistan one in an act that became year. known yeah. as partition. But in their haste to get out of the country, British diplomats arranged a Millions shoddy partition died. agreement that ignored the fact there would be inter-religious conflict. Cyril they Radcliffe, didn't ignore the British it. They wanted it. signed to draw oh. the borders of Pakistan and India, was given 40 days to do it. <laughs> After partition, millions of Muslims trekked to Pakistan in what is now known as Bangladesh, while Indians and Sikhs headed the other way. Violence between Pakistan and India ensued. Within a year of the British leaving, 15 million people were displaced and between 1 and 2 million people were dead. Yep. Trains became the sites for mass murder during the migration. Trains filled with refugees crossing the border on each side were stopped and everyone on board was murdered. Women were captured and raped. Carriages were set on fire with petrol, with people still inside. The only ones spared were the drivers, so they could transport their trains full of dead bodies to the final destination. The British knew about the train massacres, but they'd already washed their hands clean of India. Prime Minister Clement Attlee, writing to Lord Mountbatten, the last Viceroy of India in 1947, said, keep India united if you can. If not, save something from the wreck. In any case, get Britain out. Despite all this, the four million starved to death, the careless partition, the $45 trillion they stole from the Indian people. Many don't think that the British did anything wrong in India. A YouGov poll in 2014 found that 59% of respondents thought the British Empire was something to be proud of, and only 19% were ashamed of its misdeeds. Trains, cricket, Yikes. empire. What could possibly be wrong with that? I think you need to reform your your schooling there. I mean, everyone does. America does. Uh, we have. Well, I mean, we are the exact same way with the Native Americans. Yes. And, and World War Two. Yeah, and World War Two, and and a bunch of stuff. But yeah, br <laughs> the fact that Britain is at least in the current f last what five hundred years or more been the evil villain. To yeah. Most and, of the world. And like, for example giving a example of the way you should go about proper history lessons mm -hmm. germany has yeah. deep shame yep for what happened with the rise of the third reich and it's deep it's, shame and they teach it the 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 nazi outfits are illegal you yep. cannot have a you'll go to jail if you're wearing a nazi outfit or have a a, a swastika band that the nazis like, used and appropriated but in in england that kind of acceptance of wrongs is is kind of like the we that's the we don't talk about that we keep that that's the dirty laundry stuff that we don't talk about. It's weird because a lot of people like they said um, it's something you should be proud of because I think people misunderstand sometimes like they maybe they think they're talking about being proud of being British. Right. It's okay to be ashamed of something bad. Even if, obviously we had nothing to do with killing Native Americans. Right. Or the no. way, or the way that blacks were enslaved. Blacks were enslaved, but that doesn't mean you can't acknowledge and be ashamed of the past. That what the Americans did exactly to that. You exactly. can still be a proud American, and that's not, and that's not poo-pooing the the pride of your history as a nation in any mm. way, shape, or form. Because there's this tendency nowadays in America to say that if you're bad mouthing America's treatment of any people group, you're bad mouthing America. It's like, no, we're just being honest. Yeah, I, I, I know it's a human thing to not want to acknowledge flaws. It is. Uh, uh, Indian, Unfortunately. Indians have flaws uh, that they, it's the exact same kind of thing that they don't want to acknowledge that. And you, certain people, like any, if you speak any ill of India, you're, and anti-national. Right. Basically, all the people we've interviewed are anti-nationals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite hilarious. Um, but, like, it's it's a human thing. You just don't, for some reason, want to. And I don't understand that. Like, it's pride. It's, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Well, what's amazing to me is the fact that you then educate the next generation. Do you know, this is an actual statistic. 
75% of millennials that you ask, mm -hmm. tell me about Auschwitz. Yeah. They will not know what you're referring to. That was a statistic I heard on the news yesterday that they did a poll and 75% of the millennials that were asked when they are asked the question, what is Auschwitz? They didn't know. I'd be shocked at that. I was shocked at that. But that's because there is this ease with which things are just forgotten. And it's what, there are people who still say the Holocaust didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and they can be talking to somebody with a freaking number on their arm because there are still some of them around and they still won't believe it. Yeah. And it, there's this arrogance and this pride and this lack of credibility. <laughs> My favorite thing about this is that this video is being done by a Brit walking around England. Yeah. You know, I love that there's this sense of we got to take ownership of this. And that changes, that changes my generation feels very similar to how I do about kind of ignoring your past. Right. Like, because I don't think it makes sense to our generation. It's like, okay, we get it. We didn't do it. Right. But why do we have to ignore it? Right. One, do good, do right by you the learn. people you wrong. Yeah, you learn from it. Yeah, it's exactly. like, I don't understand. Like, it's actually better. Right. I think it gives people, if you teach it in schools, okay, teach the greatness that George Washington brought. Correct. But also teach his wrongdoings and, and yes. the stuff that he did. Exactly. He's a human. He's a human being. Exactly. I don't understand why you can't, like, why it's wrong to teach both sides. Kids will understand. Right. And that you can be proud of your country, but also recognize the fact that what we did to the Native Americans was or whatever country freaking, you're talking about, yeah, British, whatever you the did British, to whatever the world. You did, just be honest about it, and it's not trying to badmouth your country or anything else. It's just being honest, and you'll you will learn from. If you don't learn from the mistakes, you're going to repeat them. Yeah, that's the biggest thing about that too. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it changes and people like start to acknowledge just this stuff around the world in yeah. every country. And this isn't even about because we've watched that video about reparations, right? Yeah. This isn't even about getting that far. No. This is just about Acknowledge. accepting and acknowledging. Which the I truth. think that's what he was. Uh, he was. He was talking. He, was, he like, was. He was like, I don't believe you need to pay or uh, give actual. I think it's just acknowledge it. Yeah. Offer an apology, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things. But yeah, this is great. Uh, if they have more of this type of yeah, video, I love this. this girl, she's great. Uh, any other informative videos, please let us know uh, so we can react to them down below. <laughs> Look, <laughs> <laughs>